but it's so bright over here oh my god okay, uh just a little preface for the video you guys are about to watch it's finally fucking halloween so I'm finally making a Halloween video and I'm super excited about this one because I wrote this creepypasta based off of an Inktober drawing I did from the Inktober tarot card prompts. So um, it's my first time writing and I hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys in the video. Bye! When I lost my best friend of 15 years, I had no idea what to do. Her story was all over the newspapers. It was dominating every bold texted headline from here to out of state. One missing girl found dismembered in county ditch. Victim five, Clara Marks, found dead. Young California girl's remains turn up in ditch. I didn't know how to process information. I didn't know where my life would go after losing her. She was with me through everything, every depressing phase of my life, every joyous moment too. I've been back and forth with the investigators since she first went missing. I was the last one to see her before her disappearance. It was only natural they had questions for me, but I had no valuable information to give. The day she went missing was just like any other day I'd spent with her. One of the investigators I was particularly fond of was Detective Moreau, an older man that looked to be in his late 40s and he was kind as he was as good as his job. He was actually the one that found most of the evidence that led to Clara's body being found. Depressing as it was, it was nice to know she wasn't in pain anymore. But Detective Moreau knew how I was feeling. I mean, of course he would. It was his job to find missing people, and he probably dealt with sad people all the time. But something about him was comforting. He sat me down on the curb by all the yellow caution tape surrounding where they found her body. He began fumbling with his pocket, trying to push his phone back in. Sorry, this, this damn jacket doesn't hold anything anymore. I should probably patch my pockets back up. Yeah, I said, not really listening. I was stuck in my own head. I know this is hard, he said. It is. Maybe just go home. Don't even go to school today. <laughs> I can't even think about school. I understand. Just, just take it easy, kid. He patted my back and began to walk away when I stopped him. Hey, wait. What's up? Thank you for, uh, finding her. He smiled. I had to. And with that, he quickly turned around and walked back to, with the police to do some more talking. Right as he turned, the phone sticking out of his pocket finally fell out in a swoop, landing on some nearby grass. I rushed to grab it, but when I stood to give it back to him, he wasn't there anymore. I even looked up and down the block, but still nowhere to be seen. Must have been quick. I put the phone back in my pocket. I'll give it back to him when I see him. I began my walk home, trying not to look at what was beyond the yellow caution tape as I heard the gurney being pushed into the ambulance. It was horrifying. That night was restless. I kept tossing and turning. I was afraid to fall asleep. What if I saw her body in my dreams? What if I had a nightmare about her death? I was afraid of what was going on in my own head. I sat up in bed, rubbing my head in exhaustion that I wouldn't be able to fight with sleep. I stared blankly at the wall, remembering the time she'd been in that room with me while we joked about dumb things and stayed up late together. It hurt. Everything in my head was a whirl. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to blame. I, I would beat the shit out of whoever did this to her. I... Moreau's phone. I'd left it on my dresser by my jacket so I would remember to take it to him in the morning. I rushed the phone expecting someone from the police station or a family member so I could tell them I had his phone for the night. What I heard... I'll never forget. Vanessa. Uh, Moreau? Yes, it's me. Uh, hi, I, I guess you know I have your phone by now. I'll bring it to the station tomorrow if you'll be there. That won't be necessary, Vanessa. W why not? Vanessa, would you mind clicking on the images for me? I need to check something. Uh, sure? I was a little apprehensive. I didn't expect for someone to want me to go through their gallery images. It was strange for anyone. I opened up the little image icon on the phone, brought to the gallery with only two albums. I clicked on the first. Tell me what you see. Ah, uh, pretty typical stuff. Nice picture of the ocean, good photography. I kept scrolling through until something caught my attention. Detective, I didn't know you had a daughter. She's adorable. That's not my daughter. What? Keep scrolling. I did just that. I scrolled. 
I was so confused and tired, but I guess I was a little interested. I guess people would say I'm kind of nosy. He was giving me permission to be nosy. Now I tend not to be so peering into other people's business. I wish I had never kept scrolling. The little girl grew in every picture. Each one of them became a little newer than the last. She looked very familiar, like... Like Clara? In every picture of her, Detective Moreau stood in the back, practically the same position as all the other photos. I started to fully recognize her as my sleep watched away. This is... This is Clara. Detective Moreau laughed at the other side of the phone. Yes. I began to panic, but I kept scrolling. I was so curious, so very curious. Why did I need to know? The album ended at a picture of Clara by a lake we went together all the time. Detective Moreau's position changed as he sat at the other end of the lake, staring at my best friend. His voice came through the phone. Open the next album. No. Open it, Vanessa. No, I, I can't. Don't worry, Vanessa. It's nothing. I just, I need you to see it, okay? His voice was sweeter when he said that. I became slightly more comforted, though that was only false. Okay. I opened the next album, and I gagged. This... I had no words. Rows and rows full of Clara crying on the floor, naked, bleeding. She looked so terrified. The last few... The last few haven't left my head since I saw them. I don't think they ever will. My best friend's body in pieces laying at the ditch. Her eyes staring at the camera, almost as if there was life in them. I threw the phone down. I was in tears. I was shocked. It was terrible. Who could do this to her? Did you like what you saw? I turned around quickly, Detective Moreau looming over my back. I tried to scream, but nothing would come out. She was a lovely girl. Almost as lovely as you, no doubt, he said, running his hand on my chin from behind. Tears were coming out of my eyes, but no sound could be heard. He wrapped his arms around me, his breath disgustingly cold. It felt like, like centuries before he let me go, but he finally did. I better be going. I'll be back, Vanessa, so you can be just like her. It'll be great. I turned around slowly, hoping he would just laugh and say this was all a joke, but when I turned my head, he wasn't there anymore. A muddy footprint was all that was left to show it was even real. It's been four months since then. I haven't been able to sleep, and every time I do, he's there, just watching me. Staring at me like he did to Clara in those pictures. Oh god, those pictures, they're burned into my head. I know one day he'll do to me what he did to Clara, and I don't know when that is but I'm afraid of it every day. All I can do now is hope and pray that I never see him again.